So we are getting ready to pull this guy out. We're gonna change it, old, old coil. So as you can see, this coil comes prepped. Heatcraft was smart and they put a Sporlin TX or TEV in there, but they used some off-brand weird solenoid valve. Not a fan of that, but oh well, it is what it is, so. It's sometimes why I don't, like I don't get these prepped with temperature controllers because I don't like the controls they put in them. There was a point when they didn't put Sporlin TEVs in there and they used some other brand and that really irritated me because I'm a big fan of the Sporlin TEVs, so. But yeah, it is what it is. So I'm gonna get the temp control put on and wired in real quick and then we'll hang this coil and pipe it in. It's kind of nice when you can have your vehicle right out here to be able to get your stuff. Got a temp control right here and I've got some cord and stuff. We're gonna put a key, key to therm temp plus defrost on this bad boy because it's just a walk-in cooler. So. so we're slowly moving along. It's like polishing a turd. This roof's kind of a mess, but we got a line set ran, evaporator hung. I just got done piping it. We're gonna do a tightness test on this. We're gonna go ahead and open up nitro, put it through the high side, and I wanna see my low side rise. It's rising, so that's good. So that means the pressure's coming through. I've got a solenoid magnet on it. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and change it for on the field piece gauges. We've got a tightness test. That far right, top right button, tightness test. Press that. And then we can go ahead and fill it up and it'll time it. So. Go ahead and fill this guy up. And then we'll set a timer. And you wanna put the suction line temperature clamp on there. It's part of their tightness test. Get it up to about probably 150 psi, and then we'll pull a really good vacuum. So let's let it calm down. Okay, let it stabilize out. second and then we're going to go ahead and enter so get you guys a view of this basically it says press enter to start okay and it's going to tell me the deviation based on the time so we're getting there it's under a pressure test right now we got to foam the holes we got our thermostat wire we put a key to tip there. So, slowly but surely, moving along. Get ready to do a vacuum test. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. We dropped like two PSI or PSI and some change, barely. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Pressure's for eight, uh, 18 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and pull a vacuum on it now. We just got two hoses hooked up, running directly in and we're pulling down. So we're gonna let this go. I went ahead and set the, uh, set it to refrigeration in the BlueVac app and uh, set my uh, DK target to 10 minutes. So it should hold, be hold below 500 microns for 10 minutes for a DK test. So we're just gonna let it go right now. Line set's running downstairs. We got it supported. The way that I installed it is so that way, that's our walk-in cooler right there. There's only two things left in that tiny rack, a walk-in freezer and a little like half horsepower compressor. So we're almost done with that rack completely. The walk-in freezer is probably going to be next. I left room right here. And then also if you look at my the way I ran my strut, I left room to run the line set on that. And then we'll just have to drill a new hole. Go downstairs so that way we got room to do everything. But this guy's running right now. This one does not have a defrost clock inside the condensing unit. The defrost is uh, in the temperature controller, in the key to therm uh, temp plus defrost controller. And I also installed the LDA on it so I can remotely access it from my phone. And again, I'll show you guys that right now so that way you guys can see what it is and what I can do. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and log into the Field Piece app right now. We're gonna let it connect. And this is real time. 
My uh, suction line probe and temperature clamp are downstairs at the evaporator, so that's evaporator superheat at the moment. The box is still calling and running right now. So we're looking good. I've seen it kind of, it's bouncing between 8 to 12 degrees. So it just satisfied. So that's good. And to check, to make sure it just satisfied, we're going to go ahead and log into the key to therm dashboard. And you see that my room temperature is 34.9 degrees right now. And my system mode is off. So what we will do is go ahead and adjust my room temperature just for shits and giggles down to 30. So we can get this thing to run. So we're in refrigeration mode right now. So this is cool because I'm on the roof right now working at the condensing unit and I'm able to change the settings and get it to turn on and off. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll back to the field piece app. We're back on the field piece app. We're gonna let it run for a second because it just turned back on so my superheat's gonna kinda of move around. I'm gonna give it a minute and we're gonna watch the superheat stabilize out. The system is currently running a clear sight glass. And the superheat's looking good. I mean, we don't see some unruly high number. Right now the valve probably just opened up so that's why it's dropping down. It's trying to stabilize out, it's gonna take a minute. Mind you, this unit has ran for a full 24 hours. We came back, well, just about 24 hours. We came back, this is the next day after the install. And we're just doing a follow-up to make sure everything's good. Right on. Those are good numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back where it needs to be. I'm happy with the superheat readings right now, and I did not have to adjust it at all. We're gonna go back into the key to therm dashboard, and we're using a KE2 temp plus defrost controller. And we're going to go ahead and uh, set my box temperature. We're going to actually set it for 36 degrees because it was set for 35. Uh, we've got four defrosts a day with a three degree differential. So that means that the temperature controller is not going to turn on until it gets three degrees above the set point. So 36, 37, 38, 39, it turns on, then it comes down to 36. Four defrosts a day for 15 minutes. Everything else is pretty basic. We're good to go. Log out. Okay, so uh, walk-in cooler uh, equipment replacement. We went ahead and replaced uh, an evaporator, a condenser, and then ran a new line set to it too. Uh, obviously, you know, nothing's perfect. My work isn't perfect. There's always room to improve, okay? There's things that I don't like. There's things that I do like. It is what it is, okay? Uh, a couple of the cool features that I really like, I'm really digging being able to use the field piece app with the job link probes. Um, in a situation like this, it's really nice to be able to get evaporator superheat while you're on the roof. And then also I use the key to therm uh, temperature plus defrost controller along with their LDA uh, communication device, which makes their simple temperature controller communicate with your smartphone or wireless network. Uh, in this case, I do not have it connected to the restaurant's network. I just connected it to my smartphone. So I do have to be on site with the way that I set it up. If, if the restaurant, you know, wanted to go ahead and let me connect it to their network, then yeah, we, I could, you know, access that controller from, from my home basically. Okay. Um, but this is just the simple controller. They make a couple different ones. This is a, a fairly inexpensive controller. It just gives you basic functionality of a temperature controller. Plus it has defrost built in and obviously with the LDA added to it, you can communicate, uh, or you can uh, monitor the control via your smartphone while you're on site. Um, and like I said, or you can connect it to a network if the customer chose to do so. But, um, you know, you can get their fancy controls, uh, the evap efficiency controllers and the rack controllers that have, you know, uh, graphs built into them and trending data and, you know, all kinds of stuff with the big fancy controllers. You can control superheat from the electronic expansion valves, you know, and da, 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 You can pretty much launch a space shuttle from those big ones. Um, but you know, this is just a basic controller and there's a situation, you know, my customers, I can't always sell them something really big and fancy. Uh, they just want a simple control and I want to be able to have a digital control. So this is the perfect mix. And the cool thing about this control is, is I'm uh, able to eliminate the defrost clock. So you do not have a mechanical clock on the roof anymore. We've just got a digital clock essentially that's built into the temperature controller. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm not a, a huge fan of on the temperature controller, I shouldn't say I'm not a fan of, it's just kind of, you know, I, um, is that you, 
you can't do different times on the defrost with that control. Okay, you understand? So so basically, the only questions you get when you're setting it up is, is how many defrosts do you want a day and how long do you want the defrost to be? So with a mechanical control, I will say that one thing I like to do is I like to typically run a 45 minute to an hour long defrost in the middle of the night when nobody is in the restaurant. Um, so that's one thing that eh, I'm not a super fan of with the digital temperature controller that has the defrost built in. But, you know, as long as you have a place where it's not a big issue, where they're not, you know, consistently having freeze up issues and different things, then this should be more than adequate. And, you know, I'm going to start using these a little bit more. I actually have another job I'm going to use this same controller on with the LDA device also. So um, anyways, I'm babbling now. So that's it on this one, guys. Um, you know, check out some of these other channels I, I uh, recommend right now. And uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching again, and I will see you guys next time.